I'm at Seacole Engineering in Hastings in East Sussex. I've come to talk to Adam specifically about the use of their Haas turning sensors. Adam, good morning. Good morning. Now let's start with the variety of parts because there's lots of different components that you're machining on the machines and that's really what people like to see. Sure. So talk to me about the smallest part to start with, right okay. the way up to the beginning. Um, well, we, as you've seen, machine a variety of different sizes of uh, components. This being probably one of the smallest, I would have said. Um, it's a small stainless steel part. Um, and then we go up to something like, like this maybe, tell us about this part. Sure, yeah, we go up to, so this is a magnesium casting, comes as a, as a casting. Uh, this would be machined from scratch um, and all done on our ST, SL, ST20. Because you've got quite a few turning sensors, you talk about the ST20, that's the machine that's got the, the, the driven tools that's and right, the Y-axis? Yeah. It's got a Y-axis uh, driven tooling. So that enables you to machine this component in one hit. Roughly how long would it take you to get that through, a, through the machine inside? That is about 20 minutes from, from the start. From start to finish, impressive. Start to finish, yep. Then we go on to, uh, again, we've got some more aluminium parts here. Yep, there's, well, this is actually, again, another magnesium one. Uh, different sizes, and mag these are the aluminium ones. How do you find magnesium cuts? Very easily, actually as long as you're careful with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's so about the process, I suppose, as well. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about this, 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 this beast we've got here. What, what is this and what do you machine it on and how do you do it? So this is a, um, a magnet housing for a vibration testing machine. Uh, it's a steel casting, again, it comes in as a casting. We machine this from scratch. How on earth are you removing all of that material out of there? Um, with a series of boring bars and a grooving tool. And uh, does it quite nicely. And how long does it take for the interest of our um, there's about four or five operations on it, but we're talking probably about half an hour. Now, the first thing that comes into my mind about something like this is chatter. Do you yes. get any? No, not really. I think. It's and what would you put that down to? Um, the machine's a big machine, so it's heavy, it's sturdy. The turret's quite nice and sturdy, so we don't tend to have too much trouble. Then it's got the SSV on it, which is the variable speed, spindle speed. Okay, so you get assistance almost from the control itself to sure, be able yeah. to, depending on how the, the machining process is happening, it can control the speed. That's right, yeah. It varies the speed up and down to, to eliminate the chatter. What it actually is that? Sta mild steel. No, when it, as a part. What, what, is it an assembly of something? Yes, it goes, so this will all have a magnet moulded inside it and uh, this will be copper plated at the end and then this plate goes on top. Okay, because there's quite a lot of use of, even on that part, driven tools here with your, your drilling, milling flats. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get the best out of these machines? You don't just use them for turning, do you? you no, use sure. I mean, if we can't get hold of some um, stock hexagon, then we put the hexagon on ourselves. And this, Adam, I'm, I'm interested in this part. What's this? Sure, this is, um, this is a stainless steel part that we're making for an assembly, which, again, we make from scratch. Uh, this would be made out of a, of a billet. Um, you can't do the gearing on the outside? No, we send that away to another company for the, for the gearing, but all the other parts... So this is, this is stainless? You, you having, how are you getting the material out of that U-drill? Yeah, we send a big U-drill through first, and then the boring bars, obviously, and thread the, in, the inside of it. And what sort of quantities would you make those in? Uh, I think the last stock we made were 50 off. So we've got okay, so not massive production, so but but, no, but enough to need a machine that can can oh, handle it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it needs to have the strength to, to push the U drill through in the first place. So. Now you 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 run this, call it the cell, the turning cell. Mm. Do you get involved in the programming of the machines? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I generally um, do a lot of shop floor programming. And I know on the milling side, you tend to use uh, or often use CAD CAM offline. That's but right. is that the case here? Um, not so much. No, it's more um, on the shop floor. So you're G-code programming these sorts of parts? Yes, yes, right, yeah. Now tell me about this, this ST30. This is one of the, the biggest machines you've got, isn't it? What are we yes. talking, a 12-inch truck machine, 10, 12-station right. turret? That's right, yeah, 12-station. It's got the VDI turret on it and, uh, yeah, the large truck. And overall, your opinion of how the Haas turning cell is within the business, you're happy? I love them, yeah. I, I work on them every day and I'm, I'm very pleased to work on them.